No. Okay. No. Okay. All right, play. All right, All right. ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It is MLP Dota. It is John X Fire. We're back for our second cast of the day, and John, how the hell are you feeling with this new replay? I'm feeling great, Mike. You know, all all this casting of Dota 2 is really making me want to play, but, you know, we've, we've got 40 replays to go through, so we bet we finish that off first, eh? <laughs> yeah, there's not going to be much time to play, even though Battle Pass is out. And we both have one. And yes, our apologies, that wasn't exactly five minutes. Uh, that was slightly longer than five minutes, so you do have my apologies, but... Nevertheless, John, let's go through the plays in the draft, see what the hell is going to happen in this game. So, Pregnant 25 will be on the Lunar. We do have the Storm Spirit being played by Izkele07. Izkel. We'll have Void being played by Gorehammer. Dazzle will be played by Magnus Mistro. Or Maestro, I should say. And the Witch Doctor is being played by Baboon. And John, the Dar, if you could, please. All right, in the Dar side, we have the Keeper of the Light being played by Pleax. Pleax. We have the Earthshaker being played by T Dog, Life Stealer being played by Chessie Smurf. We have the Outworld Devourer being played by Devil with a Halo, and the Pudge being played by Sigia. Now, Mike, a lot of these replays feature the Pudge. Well, Pudge is a very popular hero, John. I believe we were talking about it in the first replay. I mean, it's the signature hero of Dota. Speaking of, he does come in for a rot. He doesn't steal the Banny Ring though. But it only makes sense. Now, the other question, is this the real Chessie? Um, highly doubtful. Highly doubtful. I, I, I doubt it. I completely doubt it. Uh, if I remember the average um, medal of this game, it looks to be a high legend, low ancient game, if I recall right. So, I don't think that's Chessie. I mean, it would only make sense, though. I mean, he is, it would be a Smurf, John. It only makes sense it's low, but yeah, it's highly doubtful. Uh, I don't know why Chessie would be wasting his time on a Smurf. Uh, considering, you know, you should, probably should be practicing for the real scene, but... <laughs> but, <laughs> regardless, he is here. We have Sigir. Gonna find Gorehammer up at the top lane. The Void was just trying to soak some XP. And, well, he has been relatively successful in doing so. It is a bit harder to take down a Void in the off lane. Like, he does have the time walk available. In fact, he will just start trading hits with the Pudge. Actually, Sigia could be in a bit of trouble, although now we have three heroes of the top lane. Baboon is here to try and help out as well with Gorehammer. And they might just be able to find Pleas on the Coddle. And Baboon continues chasing. The Dukes are coming out. One more hit from Baboon will do the job. Gorehammer's coming back in, but who's going to get the first blood? Gore does not go for the Coddle, and Baboon's going to go down here. And in fact, Sigia picks that one up. Now Gorehammer will try and get the hell out of there himself. Please. Continuing the chase, but eventually we'll give up. But first blood, going to the way to the dial. It's going to be very good news for them. We should also comment on the other lanes. We do have Devil with a Halo up against Izkel on that storm. Now, we have seen some recent OD nerfs. Who, do, who wins this lane between the storm and the OD? Mm, I think it's a bit of a toss-up. I'd say... OD, which should probably have a slight lane advantage, maybe until level 4, level 5. He, he def definitely has better early game skills. Rather odd, he's going for what looks to be an Arcane Orb build over Astral Imprisonment. I feel like against a Storm, you should probably be okay with going greedy and going for the Astral. You know, getting a bit more farm out of the lane as well, but looks like he is going for the Arcane Orb build, which is alright, I suppose, against a Storm. I'd still prefer see the orb ah the imprisonment over the orb yeah i certainly question it as well uh mind you though he is completely dominating this lane and oh actually bot lane we miss a kill t-dog ends up going down to the jewel lane of the radiant but yeah i i have to agree with you like i don't understand uh, the point of going for the arcane orb build uh that being said though every time storm comes in for a right click he's copying an arcane orb so that in stolen might make a difference i mean that the damage is pretty insane, as you can see. He gets unlucky with a miss, but until that level 6 is acquired by Izkel, there's not really much he can do about this. Yeah, definitely so. It's, it's going to be a rough time for him. I, Storm early levels is um, really hard to play. I, I'd have to say his spells are not quite mana efficient. Static is nice, of course, and Overload does a decent amount of damage, but it's not as good as spamming out Arcane Orb or 
astral imprisonment. It's just not as efficient, I feel. It definitely is not. He already has 10 int stolen away from him as well, which kind of comes in handy if you think about it. Like the bottle usage is much more efficient for the storm in that sense that he can, you know, regen 100% mana. But at the same time, you, you're still going to struggle spamming spells or getting right clicks, uh, you know, due to the fact that you're losing all that attack. So we'll see who it does help in the end. But the OD, fairly far ahead. Iskill trying to keep up with it. 16 to 20 last hits right now. Looks like T-Dog at the bot lane was in a bit of trouble again, but he'll stay in the lane with very, very low HP. Does have to be very wary though. I mean, that Lucent Beam does tend to deal a lot of damage. Magnus Maestro coming in from the back lines as well. T-Dog actually going to find himself a kill. It looks like Magnus overextends. And T-Dog, he does not tick out to the Poison Touch. As well as the fact that Luna was not there to help out. Meanwhile, top lane, Gorehammer actually in massive trouble. Chessy is making the chase. Gore healing up thanks to the sake of Baboon with the heals. Illuminate still going through, not connecting. And Gorehammer still duking them around. The time walk still has five seconds left. It looks like he will end up surviving successfully. And in fact, Magnus comes in the top lane and wants to have a go now. They ended up going on the Codal first, but Chessie is going to cop a fair bit of damage out of this. In fact, look at the bashes coming out. Chessie will rage up though. He's going to try and regen some HP, but it won't be successful. He will end up dropping. And the buyback... Ooh. <laughs> well, he's going to go after them, John Gorehammer. But the buyback, that was definitely a rage buyback. Uh, I don't know. Um, early game buybacks are not as really not costly, and I suppose if you don't care too much for farm, if your hero is not, you know, not too dependent on farm, you want to be in lane as long as possible to catch, you know, to catch as much XP as you can. Really, so I feel like it's all right. I feel like it's an all right move. He does want to reach his level six faster than he would just want to focus on farm. So I, I feel like it's fine. It definitely does feel like a rage buyback, though, as you mentioned. <laughs> it was pretty darn immediate. But, uh, I mean, it could, you never know. It could be the real Chessie John. You know, maybe he's a bit upset. You never want to die to these lower level players. <laughs> you never know. But moving on, Devil with a Halo, still ahead of Storm. 31 to 24. <clears throat> Excuse me. Everything going pretty well. Bot lane, though. Tregna will get taken down by T-Dog and Sigia. I've got to say as well, Sigia has been making some pretty fantastic rotations. He does get a kill in the mid lane and then moves straight to the bot lane where they get another kill. This Pudge is doing some nice work for his team. <laughs> Top lane. Jesse going to be chased down. No lucky bashes coming out from Gorehammer. He will be forced to back off again. This aggressive tri lane, like, it is allowing a lot of farm for Gorehammer that he shouldn't be able to get. Like, at this point, it's near his tower now. He'll be able to find a few more last hits. The levels are going up slowly but surely. This could be very troublesome for the side of the Dire, in, you know, in about 10 minutes or so. This Void could get out of control like the last Void we saw. And in fact, mid lane, Iskel goes down again to Sigia. And they might just get Magnus as well. He does end up getting a double kill. This Pudge is making so much work around the map. Yeah, he definitely is. Um, I'm not sure if he should be allowed to get that much from the map. Granted, his rotations have been really good. I don't think I've seen him pop a smoke just yet, so all these were done without smoke even. And I, I feel like that's maybe a lack in ward coverage from the Raiden side. He almost gets another one. He's Oh, the hook! Chessy! I mean, that was pretty obvious. He was even using the animation to kind of let his team know that he needed to cast that hook. And, well, a very big mistake coming out from the Lifestealer. Pretty obvious one, it feels, at like that. So, Sigi, I'm probably not going to be very happy with that. Probably could have got his level 5 out of that kill as well, but he will have to back off now. Go back to the fountain, heal up his HP. He dog me well. Bot lane. You know, John... Actually, Magnus finds Chessie at the top lane. A lot of kills going on. I was just about to say, I'm not sure where the Luna really stands in the meta right now. Like, I'm not a big fan of her. 
do you really feel like she's you know powerful enough to be picked up as often as she's being picked up mm, I've, I've not had a good experience with Luna in my games quite recently I I think it's still a fine hero but there's something about how how people play the hero or maybe it just doesn't fit the meta right now I'm, I'm not quite sure in that one I just feel like I've run into bad Luna players, that's that's the least they can say about that. Yeah, well, top lane, Magnus actually going to go down. Now Callhammer trying to find a return kill. Chessie again going to get caught out. The Melodict is there. He might just tick out to this. In fact, it looks like he will. He doesn't have the level 6 and he will end up dying. So definitely not worth it for the Witch Doctor kill. The hook does come in, but it doesn't actually connect on anyone. And now we have a DC from the Coddle. And John, if there's one thing that has been happening every game... It appears every single game we cast is a disconnection. Yeah, it does seem like that. I'm, I'm starting to wonder what servers these games are from. I, I could tell a couple of them were from Southeast Asia because um, there was some very Filipino uh, text coming out. Not Filipino language, but very Filipino style of alt chat coming out in a couple of these games. And I'm just wondering where a few of these games are. I, I feel like most of it's Southeast Asia, which would explain the internet disconnections, uh, which, you know, it, it, it makes me happy seeing uh, all the disconnects. It reminds me of home, Mike. Thank you, John. Well, back to the mid lane. I love watching the Storm and the OD, seeing who's ahead. And Devil with the Halo. He's, uh, he's about a K ahead of the Storm now. In terms of levels, he's level 9. The Storm is level 7. So he is literally two levels ahead of the Storm right now. And the gold is quite substantial as well. Like, Devil with the Halo, he understands that this matchup is not favored towards the Storm. And he's taking full advantage of that. He's not allowing anything to go on. Top lane. Looks like there might be a bit of rotation coming in. Although the T1 tower is under attack right now. Illuminate. We'll ward them off a bit. I mean, what do you do if you're the Storm in this mid lane? Hmm. You either, I think you start to sack your lane and just switch to jungle at this point. Yeah, there's really not much you can do against the OD. Um, maybe you could ask a support to rotate in to help you zone out. But at this point in the game when the OD is already level 10, it's really hard. You, you've kind of lost your laning momentum, so you might as well just retreat somewhere where you can get a stable amount of gold and XP. Yeah. Because you're not going to get it in lane. Well, oh, actually, nice hook shot out onto Gorehammer top lane. Again, no dismember was available to be used, so it's no. There's no real point cooking the uh, the void. You haven't got any disable to hold him down. Maybe Magnus will be the next target. In fact, he is almost in hook range. Diggy are just waiting. Again, he goes for the void, but I I disagree with that a lot. He just time walks it off every time. I do not know why Sigo keeps doing that. Yeah, it seems a bit of a pointless exercise. And Void does have level 6 as well, so one hook and it could actually mean two kills for the Void if you're not careful. Absolutely. Digia again, still waiting in those tree lines. Magnus, he does see him, tries to go for him, does actually miss. Now the Chrono comes in. He goes for Chessie straight off the bat. Baboon is there, the Death Ward is channeled, and he does find that kill. Now Sigia sticks around, and he actually gets the deny. How the hell does that work? Gorehammer goes down, Devil with a Devil with a Halo, actually making a nice little rotation. He might find himself a double kill, but Boone tries to TP that will not be successful with all that damage coming out from the Arcane Orb. And well, it's kind of like you said, like sometimes when you throw out these hooks, it may mean a couple kills going towards the opposing team, even though the hook didn't even connect. But this OD. Making sure his team doesn't get nothing out of that, he he will find himself a double kill himself. A very well played to him. Yeah, the OD is definitely looking a bit too strong right now. Um, it, it's not good. Uh, looking at Storms while well, he just dies to the Pudge uh, with a haste. It's, it's not a good start for the Radiant side. Um, they have really farm heavy heroes. The Void, the Storm, and Luna all need some space. And right now, none, none of them are really pulling far ahead enough to say for me to say that this is an all right spot for them to be in. Yeah. I mean, actually Magnus, he's in a lot of trouble right now. Oh, the Arcane Orb and the Hammer dropped. Devil with a Halo, not wasting any time. 
I've just got to say, John, I mean, this, this Storm Spirit you mentioned before, he should have gone to the jungle by this point. He comes to the bot lane, T-Dog. Echo Slam, though, Ooh. onto everything. So much damage, but Sigia misses the hook as well. And now Isco going to find a lot of farm for himself. He'll get Sigia. And this is, you know, those kind of kills, those kind of rotations can bring a Storm back into the game. He does get a fair bit of XP and gold out of that. In fact, I mean, he's level 10 now. Not exactly caught up to the OD, but... You don't want to give kills like that away. You definitely don't. And it it was a, a decent enough count, uh, decent enough try from the dark side. Uh, beautiful echo slam with the opportunity with a hook, but you know they didn't manage to get anything out of it. Unfortunately, I feel like it comes down to T Dog's build as well. He did prioritize enchant totem in the laning phase rather than the usual aftershock to get the damage out from the spam. Uh, rather interesting leaning choice. I'm actually not too sure what the meta is for Earthshaker to go for now, but he has his blink at 14 minutes. That's a really decent time considering the rough start T-Dog had in laning phase. That absolutely is. Speaking of rough start, he might give one to Tregna, but no, in fact, he'll cop everything. He was so close to getting the Luna. He just needed one right click. But it will not come to him now, top lane as well. They found the Coddle, so the Radiant making a lot of work happen. Siggy are trying to get Magnus, but Magnus making a run for it. Chessie is making the chase. There's the uh, Shallow Grave. They'll find another one onto Chessie. And now they're going straight for the Pudge, the Chrono. It is there just in time. Oh, that's really unfortunate for the Pudge. They will get Siggy, and that is four kills going to the way of the die. And John, the life still buys back again. I'm not sure about all these early game buybacks. They grant that they keep you in the game by looking to get XP and you can farm the gold back fairly easily early game. Um, which is okay, but I feel like every time he buys back and doesn't find too much farm, it's kind of a waste. I mean, what's Chessie doing? He's, he's getting a bit upset. He's, uh, he's not calming down. And that's a lot of gold being expended. It's a lot of waste of time, really, as well. I'm just... Very questionable plays coming out from Chessie. See if it yeah, does he, pay off at the end. It, it's very odd. I'm watching Chessie farm right now. He seems to enjoy popping rage up against the uh, neutral creeps, which, to be fair, I guess the attack bonus is nice. It's it's just that it's 75 mana every single time you pop that. So if he does get ganked, he's not going to have enough to escape with his life. I think that was the mistake he made a while ago as well. He didn't have mana, but he was running up to Dazzle. So he can even rage up then as well. It's it's a pretty rough time for this life steer. I mean that is a good point. You, oh, Echo Slam top lane. He actually whiffs it though. T Dog. He's gonna try and get out of here safely now. But my God, I mean the distance was pretty long. He expected his blink dagger to take him all the way. Look at this Magnus is just chasing him as a dazzle, and he'll take him out solo. What is this? I mean, that's the power of Weave and a Medallion, Mike. Yeah. Right-click damage that comes out, it's uh, its something you can't really underestimate. It's, it's kind of insane. Bookshot onto the Void does not end up connecting, and Gorehammer just gets the hell out of there. This is, uh, I mean, it's a 12 to 12. It's a 4k net worth lead towards the Radiant, which is surprising considering the terrible start they did have. But overall on kills, it's still even. So I suppose the Radiant do take the lead, but not so much that it's, you know, uncontestable. Mind you, they have got a bit more map control. They did take the T1 bot as well. So, kind of figures why they're a bit ahead. So I might just have to calm down a bit. Not buying back for no reason. Oh, Magnus actually gives his life away almost. Slither of HP. Now Sigia trying to find the Storm Spirit. He needs to get the Dismember off ASAP after it though, and he will not do so. John, the Devil with the Halo actually goes for a Shadow Blade as well. I think it's a decent item on OD. It, it depends entirely on what you're trying to go for. After all, ooh, beautiful hook. Yeah, you'll get Izko, and sometimes you can react fast enough to be able to zip out of that, like before the hook connects, but. His kill was not expecting it. I feel like from from uh, Sigia's positioning, he was down in the river. Storm Spirit was up on the ramp. I, I feel like it's definitely something he could dodge, unless it was right outside 
the 1000 range of vision, but I feel like it wasn't, so... Rather questionable to get hooked there. You know, I, it definitely was not outside his vision. Uh, he was standing right next to the creeps of the Radiant, so I 100% believe he saw that. He just didn't react fast enough, unfortunately, but... We'll see if he can do so in the future. I mean, Sigia, he's been playing a fantastic roaming pudge. He's been making so much happen across the map. There's not, there's not much you can fault him on. He's died three times. One of them was a suicide. And apart from that, he set up, he set himself up six kills. I mean, it's pretty great as it stands. And John, is it just me or is there a regeneration room sitting behind the tier one tower? Just hold that thought for a second because they found Chessie again. They commit the chrono and the death ward and get that kill. And in fact, they might have trouble getting out of this one. Please. He cops the coconut, but there's the hook shot coming from Punch and he gets the dismember off just in time. The time walk is there though. Baboon goes down now. Devil with a halo is around. Gorehammer is making a run for it. But look at the damage coming out from Devil. And well, the mana drain. Beautifully done as well. He understood the mana was low. He commits it. Gets the stun. But John, can you just explain to me why the hell is there a regeneration rune? Uh, Pudge has been hooking it, Mike. <laughs> he hooked it twice over. Uh, bring it away from the Radiant side. So. That's a pretty nice play. A lot of people forget that Pudge can hook these now. It is interesting, right? Like he puts it in the trees, and that and that way, like if his core OD needs it, he just goes and picks it up. Like it's actually pretty clever. Yeah, yeah it's something that people don't consider a lot. Uh, I'm not sure why. It's really useful in certain niche cases, especially if you're helping your mid out. Just hook a rune over to hide it away from the enemy mid and secure it for your mid. And yeah, it's it's a nice little play to do every now and again. Seems balanced. Uh, bot lane though. Oh, he cops the whole echo. There's a massive damage and Devil comes in with the right click. Those arcane orbs dealing so much damage. Now they found the Lunar as well. Devil, can he deal the damage? The Eclipse is there. They might be able to take him out and they do. That's a wicked kill streak. But the Lunar goes down anyway. Sigia finding it for himself. But that gold was massive. It should have been a lock out of the way of the Lunar. Doesn't feel that way for some type of reason, but it should have been. Magnus actually finds himself a kill onto the punch. Now T-Dog trying to find the return. Please is still there as well, but T-Dog... No, the fish was too early. He goes down to the death ward. Now please still trying to find him on the coddle. But Magnus is going to turn around here on the dazzle. They might be able to find this. The poison touch is there. And well, I don't see Coddle getting out of this one. Baboon is still chasing. The coconut will connect, and he's going down. That's four down for the side of the Dyer, and that is some massive kills going to the way of the Radiant. Yeah, it really is. Um, the last fight where Luna took out the OD, it would have been a net gain for Luna if she didn't die after. Uh, she actually all she actually lost 129 gold there when I was checking fight recap. So. Rather unfortunate, it was a big kill for her, it's just that it was completely negated by the fact that Pudge killed her immediately. Oh, Gorehammer, he gets Ooh. caught out with the hook, now the Dismember as well. There is some very nice vision there with the Observer Ward, and as I said, John, this Pudge, the man knows what he's doing. He's got 10 stolen strength already, but more so, it's just the plays he keeps making. He always seems to find a core. And he always seems to be able to get the kill as well before they can time walk or zip out. It shouldn't be this easy for a Pudge to do that. Yeah, it definitely shouldn't be something that you allow a Pudge to do. Um, when you're playing against Pudge, you usually want to keep a lot more wards up to watch the movement. But there's only one Radiant Ward so far. And it's really not going to help against Pudge. It's, it's a good ward for scouting jungle farming. But not really a position where the Pudge would be for the most part. No. No, it really, not really a position he'd be in as a Pudge. Never, nevertheless, let's see if they'll plant some more. I mean, Baboon's got two sentries, two observers. So he may just need the time to place them down. He was being a bit greedy. He is going for an Aghanim Scepter first. Now, as a position four, which Doctor? Not the worst idea in the world, but at the same time, to rush that over like something like a four star for a Glimmer Cape, it's questionable. I would argue it's very questionable. Mm, I'd go beyond that. I'd say it's a really bad starting item for Witch Doctor. Um, let's say you get your Agnums before you hit level 18. So you have a Death Ward that deals 105 damage to bounces. It, it's not much damage if you think about it really hard, Mike. Um, 105 damage, considering the armor gains that cores get, 
It's really not going to do too much, although I guess it is amplified up by the Dazzle. It's just, it feels like a wasted opportunity. We'll look at bot lane. Regna, he gets taken down immediately. They try to go back for the OD, but it's not going to work. The hook Ooh. shot, he actually get his kill. He's got no mana left. Do they know this? Sigia, he won't be able to get him in time. He goes down the hill. Meanwhile, T Dog, who are they going for? They actually get Magnus. Now, Baboon as well. The hookshot will not connect this time around, but Devil with a Halo finds it again. 17 to 21 now. 23 and a half minutes in. Things look better and better for the Dyer, apart from Chessy, who only has really an Echo Saber. And he might get caught out again. Gorehammer is around. Mind you, Sigia is there to help out, and Gorehammer knows it. He will, in fact, go for the punch. Where's the Chrono, though? He needs to commit this. In fact, no, the bashes were enough. He got very lucky with that. He is still silenced from the Mask of Madness, but he will eventually get out. Sometimes you get lucky with that RNG, and that's all you need. And at this point, I don't see Chessie really being able to catch him. Although it appears he'll keep trying. Gorehammer actually turns around. Can he deal enough damage? Nice infest comes out. And then the Shadow Blade. To just let him walk out of there scot free. Not good news for the side of the guy. I mean, this life stealer, he's getting nothing done. Yeah, definitely. He's been a non factor in this entire game, which is, I think it's fine because the OD is getting so much on the map. The Cottle is, has his agonims as well. So they're, they're throwing the life stealer under the bus, but they're getting a lot in return. Don, I don't know if you just saw that. Uh, Devil just walks in. To the storm, uh, right clicks him twice and kills him. Uh, again, the storm does not react quickly at all. He literally just kept walking when he was getting right clicked with arcane orbs. You really can't do that. Now, top lane as well. Oh, Gore, he gets hooked in. The coconut does save him from the dismember. And now, actually, Sigia in a bit of trouble. The Fisher does come in. T Dog trying to hold him in place. And now they will. He ends up going down. The Astral is also there onto the Witch Doctor, which cancelled off the Death Ward. And again, these Arcane Orbs. Way too much damage, and Devil is again unstoppable. So this man, he seems to be able to find himself a streak every two seconds. The Tier 1 Tower now at the top lane will be the target. And it's like you mentioned about a minute ago, like Chessy. Although he hasn't really been able to find some farm or really help the team out, it doesn't really matter, because Devil's doing the job for him. Yeah, definitely. It, it really doesn't matter, and I feel like their target prioritization is definitely a bit iffy on the Radiant side. It, they had a pretty decent lead, but they are shutting down a Life Stealer who, even with the farm, I think would still not have as much impact in this game as a farm, but with you would. The, you know, Devil has been doing so much work with his pure damage and his mana drain that it's, it's been a, a huge bane to the Radiant side. I feel like if they instead focus their efforts on helping your storm in mid while sim simultaneously shutting down the OD, they'd have a better time right now. Well, they do find a chrono mid lane onto Chessy, but the hook shot again, Sigia gets him the hell out of there. Of course, the, uh, the Aether Lens does help with that range. They are going in for a team fight right now, but with no chrono, I don't know if this is the play. Meanwhile, Devil in the back lines take down Baboon, but the Eclipse is dealing so much damage. He four stuffs out, but it's not enough. He's gone. They do end up taking down Chessy as well, so two down for the side of the Dyer. They do end up overextending a bit. P Dog, he's holding on to that Echo Slam. Maybe waiting for the right opportunity, but it might be too late for it. In fact, the side of the Dyer do claim just get the hell back. Tigia looks like he is looking for a hook attempt. They will zip in onto the Coddle right now. The hook is there to save him. And the Fisher as well. Now the Echo comes in from T Dog. It does the job. Tregna is making a run for it. And Iskel overextends again. He will lose his life. And please, I mean, he has the Aghanim Scepter. He will just heal himself up during the daytime as it stands. And we'll just get back into the uh, into the lane. Yeah, this is a really good Ags timing on this Cottle. He's had it for at least, I want to say at the very least five minutes, but it almost feels like he had it up by 17. So he's had it for a fair bit of time and... It really makes fighting during daytime very hard for the region side. It really does. At the same time during the night, like, yeah, you've got the Lunar, but you need that, you know, you need that vision for the Void. They do end up finding Magnus. The Aether Lens is there, though, and we'll protect him. Wait a minute. What is when that? did Magnus get 
an Aeon Disc? And why does Magnus have an Aeon Disc? And why is Magnus level 17? That's a very good question, John. Uh, he seems to have found a lot of solo kills, at the least. Um, you know, that's a good question. How the hell did he do that? He has more... He's almost on equal footing with the Void in terms of farm. He's ahead of Lifestealer as well. Um, <laughs> when did that happen? I actually did not notice at all when Magnus managed to farm up both a Solar Crest and an Aeon Disc kind of support. Well, I mean, he is 458. Like, he's been very active across the map. Uh, it's still very, very strange. But he has been involved in pretty much almost every kill the Radiant has. I guess it makes some sense? Who the hell knows? I'm sure we'll find out eventually. Maybe. Probably not. But the Aether Lens, um, sorry, the Aeon Disc is a bit weird. Like, do you agree with this item on the Dazzle? Like, is that what he needed? I think if you're going to get an Aeon Disc on a support, I think Dazzle's probably one of the best ones to pick it up on. Mainly, it keeps you alive long enough to cast Shallow Grave in someone else. You know, if, if you get jumped first, if they tar try to pick you off first, it, it gives you time to escape, pull back, and then Shallow Grave someone. It, it's pretty good. I'd say on life-saving supports, having an Aeon Disc is fine. You're not going to deal damage anyway. You're there to heal people up. So people, uh, heroes like Oracle, maybe it's semi-valuable on them. But, you know, there are always better items for less gold. Well, bot lane. They have found the Luna, and in fact, is a kill trying to go for the Earthshaker. This Chrono really wasn't that great. He gets taken out immediately, and now they're going to go for more. Magnus getting ripped apart. The Aeon Disc does save him for the time being, but how long will it last? It won't last very long is the answer. He did also use that Shallow Grave way too early while the Aeon Disc was going. So, kind of like you basically put two Aeon Discs on yourself. It wasn't very good, but nevertheless... Or man wipe John, for the side of the dial. It's really hard to say how the Radiant come back from this, right? Like, Luna isn't overly farmed. Neither is the Void. The Storm is... Pretty much, every time you see him, he ends up dying. Like, what the hell do you do against someone like Devil with a Halo, who's just hitting like an absolute truck? I think you really need to force a fight in your favor, so that means you initiate first, rather than being the one initiated on. I think that's key, and whoa, Iskeli really just used a lot of mana for some zips that didn't amount to anything there. Yeah, he almost got a kill, but the Astral was there from Devil. Looks like they will go in again. The mana drain on the void, very good indeed. It drains all his mana, in fact, he stuns himself up. The Dyer probably not realizing what just happened. They do end up backing off. And they took the tier 2 anyway, so what the hell's the point of overextending? But 20 to 30 now, 6k net worth lead for the side of the Dyer. Things are getting from you know, good to better for this Dyer end. Devil again, he's going to find Tre Tregna. Just waiting for the right opportunity. The Eclipse is available, mind you. But with T-Dog there, it might be enough to be able to hold him in place. Oh, the Coconut keeping him alive, though. He will end up going down with the Death Lord, dealing way too much damage to Devil. He should just get out of there, and in fact, he's gone. Now Magnus trying to help out a bit, but he's been mana drained. And well, with that Dismember, he might just drop the Aeon Disc, is there to try and help out. Now the Coconut again. Here comes Iskel, trying to get some return kills. Again, the Fisher saves the day, and it was a very well-placed one at that. But Iskel doesn't plan to stop, and he will find the kill. Illuminate will come in the last minute. Feel a bit of damage, but ultimately does nothing. And so 20 to 31, they get a hell of a lot of gold out of that. A lot of XP as well. How much does it matter? Not 100% sure yet. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think... I mean, it's nice that they get to kill in the OD and the Pudge. But a lot of gold, again, went to the Witch Doctor and the Dazzle. Um... <laughs> I'm, I'm really not sure if that's a worthwhile trade. You lose your Luna, your Luna lose, loses gold from that fight, rather than gains anything. The Storm gains an insignificant amount of gold, about 200 according to the fight recap. And your Witch Doctor gets a thousand gold. Uh, uh, the farm prioritization at this point in the game really should be on the chorus. It's not yet that point in the game where you want your supports to be farmed. You do want farm in your supports, but we're talking about maybe 40, 15 minutes out in the game. We're at 32. This is when your core should be carrying your back. And right now on the Radiant side, it just doesn't feel like it. No, it really, really doesn't. You see them trying to take the Roshan, but they take it so slowly. 
the coddle just using that blinding light and essentially making it so number one they're aware that the dire are aware number two you can't even hit the roshan so now they just leave it at less than half hp and it looks like nobody else will try to go for this for the moment jesse is still trying to farm on that life stealer he's got the sergeant yash he's got the echo saber he's trying to finish off the deso but he is relatively far away from that and so, I mean, lifesteal has pretty much been a non-factor this whole game so far. So it's like, does it really matter if it changes now? You know, you know it's just going to make it harder for the Radiant if it does. Baboon finally also gets that Aghanim Scepter. It can make a difference. Will it make that much difference? We're about to find out because Devil's going in. Magnus is taking the Roshan by himself, which is a bit questionable. Now they will actually get Izkel as well in the back lines. The Disable keeping him down long enough. Now Sigia in a bit of trouble. Where's the Chrono? There it is. He's caught too. But Devil is there to just astral the Coddle away. Sigia probably not going to be so lucky, but he's so tanky anyway. He gets the hook shot. Now Chessie, he'll end up dropping. But again, we just spoke about it. That doesn't really matter. The full team wipe occurs. The Roshan's available. What are they going to go for? It looks like they will just grab the Roche first or maybe just go to the mid lane. And in fact, it will be the mid lane they go for. Yeah, I think that's the right choice in this case. Um... There's no real pertinent need for the Roshan, I'd have to say, for this team. Um, it's, it's, uh, none of them are really great Aegis carriers. Maybe you could make a case for the Lifestealer on OD. It's not that great, mainly because when you die, you lose your int, int stacks, I guess. It's it's not ideal for OD. You lose the int. So your damage output is pretty much cut off when you die anyway. On the Lifestealer, to the very least, he can cast a few spells and escape, so there's some purpose in that. Oh, the dieback on Tregna. Beautiful hookshot again from Sigia. Iskel comes in, but deals literally nothing. They lose their mid racks. I mean, the side of the rate, the side of the Dyer, I should say, right now, could take the secondary racks. They know there was a dieback on the Luna, but they don't go for it yet. They are playing relatively safe. They will go for the Roshan first. Do you agree with this choice? Should they go for a Rax first, or just go for the Roshan? I feel like it's fair enough for them to pull back after one set of Rax, mainly because the Void does have Chrono up again, right when he respawns. So it's, it's a safe choice to go for the Roshan. Oh, they do manage to catch the Swarm, though. Yeah, Izkel was trying to go for the steal on the Aegis, and now with that, you've got two people with no buyback, and they're your main cause. Aegis is available on Devil as well, so although he won't have the instill after he revives... I mean, John, you've seen how much damage the man's dealing, do you think he really cares? Dazzle, he is gonna get stunned up, he does have that Aeon Disc, but that just means more in stolen for the OD, and now he's at 48. He's max level 25, he's got a Scythe Device, he's got a damn Hurricane Pike and a Shadow Blade, as well as the drums, he's pretty much unstoppable. And yeah, he really is... No, go on. Um, part of the issue, I feel like, it, it's that there are no defensive items on the cores on the Radiant side. You see Luna trying to go for the BKB now, but it's a bit a bit too late for that. Like, OD is stopped by BKB. You get a BKB, what's he going to do? He, his uh, Arcane Orb doesn't pierce spell immunity. His Santis Eclipse doesn't pierce spell immunity. You just BKB, the guy does nothing. Yeah. But it's a bit too late now, like, uh, Luna opted to farm for the Manta, the Mask of Madness, and the Dragonlance. And Void opted to rush the Agnes, and Mom, and Shadowblade, but it's not doing anything anymore. No, it really isn't. The BKB was pretty... it feels like an obvious rush to go for on the Luna this game, but... Iskel doesn't feel it. Looks like... Or not Iskel, I should say, but he is jumping in. Tregna trying to help out, he is getting slowed down, commits the Manta now. But still, I mean, they're very healthy on the side of the Radiant, or on the, on the side of the Dire, I should say. The problem is the Coddle does not have daytime. So he can't use that Illuminate to heal up, nor does he get that out of vision. But they will find themselves Magnus. His kill jumps in, he does use the Vortex, but there's no damage being dealt. Blinding Light is there as well. Now Chessie wants to go in. He won't be able to find anyone, but this rack slowly getting ticked down. Now the hookshot coming in onto the void. He gets to this member, not enough damage being dealt. Now the echo comes in, but he doesn't catch Iskel. He really wanted that storm. Shallow Grave just in time, but the astral is there from Devil, and that will pretty much. Wait, what? I believe that might have been the Aeon disc. 
that stop that maybe? Well, is kill does come in from the with the vortex. Chessy fighting. Nice chrono comes out though. It is onto two and the death ward. It's actually dealing so much damage onto the dire side. They end up going down. The OD has the Aegis, so the Agony Inflictor did essentially pay off for Baboon, but ultimately, with an Aegis, they can't really uh, kill him a second time. So they'll just keep going. Yeah, they definitely could just go for the Mega Creeps here, but it looks like... They, it looks like they will, which is a good call. Um, that's definitely what you need, Dan. Oh, T-Dog. <laughs> that's unfortunate, T-Dog. Oh my, he's not going to be happy about that one. I mean, he was close to setting it up perfectly, but he couldn't get there just after. Hookshot actually misses onto Baboon. Signia hasn't been missing much recently. They will end up biting the Coddle, and this might mean they have to back off. They've lost three heroes now, and there's no real worth in risking your OD or your punch for this when you're definitely not going to find a Rax with only two heroes. Yeah, it felt a bit greedy. Um, T Dog, I, I actually thought T Dog was fine from the storm's jump because he, he was sitting down near the staircase, like a bit to the right of the staircase leading up to the mid, that transition between mid and top, somewhere there. He was sitting right there when the storm passed by, but then he blinked into the storm's path. So, rather unfortunate. I mean, I mean it's, it's a bit greedy. He wanted to go for the creep wave. Didn't, probably didn't expect Iskel to go in, but he's been. You know, if, you, if you've been paying attention to Iskel, he's been zipping around to the creep waves for quite a fair bit now. So it's not something too unexpected for a storm to do at this point in the game. No, it's absolutely not. Looks like Gore is doing something unexpected. He's actually got a Shadow Blade. And we'll go for Devil. Chrono was committed. The damage is really not there, though. He needed at least one other person. Look at this. And what the hell do you do against this? The Scythe device committed, you've got no BKB, you've got no Lincolns, he uses the question mark as he deserves to. I mean, it's just a shame, right, for Gorehammer, he can't, like, why go in by yourself? There's no way you were getting that kill. Looks like Chessie, he is going to find Magnus, again the Aeon Disc saving the day for the time being. Magnus will also commit the Shallow Grave. And well, with those bashes, he should end up dropping, and he will, and this will mean the die will go straight to that top lane. In fact, the OD is going to find himself a double damage rune on the way. Going to be hitting like an absolute truck. There will be a buyback coming out from Gorehammer on the void. Does use the Shadow Blade. Again, the Chrono is up. He does have an Aim Inceptor. Now, Iskel goes in with the Vortex. No Chrono quite yet. Now, the Coconut as well. He needs to throw the Chrono out sometime. There it is. He catches through the Death Ward as well. This could be all the damage they need, but the Pudge is the one copying it, and he's perfectly fine with that Aeon Disc. Now, Gorehammer actually goes down, Chessie. He's going to make a chase for more Tregna. There's the Echo from T-Dog. Does the job, and the Hook Ooh. from Sigia. Perfectly timed onto the Witch Doctor. I think the Radiant's had enough, John. They will get mega regardless of whether they have or not. And what a game we've been watching today. Again, Iskel comes in, gets hexed. I don't know if the Storm has considered getting a, a Lincoln Sphere, but he definitely probably should have earlier on in the game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the Lincolns would have really helped him out. Or even a BKB. Like, I feel like uh, it's probably the... Uh, the blunder of this game is really the lack of BKBs or any sort of magic immunity from the Radiant side. Yeah. OD one alone, you did nothing. I mean, I gotta admit, he definitely didn't do it alone, but Devil has played like an absolute god on this OD. Like, I mean, how many kills? He's got 23 kills. Yeah, I mean, OD did end up getting a lot of those kills, but I feel like you know, the reason why OD won the lane so hard was because the side lanes were pressured. At, at the very least, maybe not bot lane with T-Dog, but they pressured top lane enough to keep at least one support up top. Luna was... It didn't seem like Luna was comfy enough to stay alone in bot, and they forced top to be always occupied by a support. It, it really didn't help the storm. I, I feel like... When you have a Storm Spirit, you really have to secure the Storm's lane. Like, he has to take priority in that mid lane. Because once he tapers off, it's very hard for him to play catch-up. Especially against something like an OD. Yeah. So, the fact that he couldn't play catch-up really hurt Radiant's chances a lot. Well, John.
that will be the second game of the day. We'll be going into our third one. Now, of course, we will go on our five-minute break to you know visit the Lou, have a cheeky smoko. But thank you for everyone watching. We'll be back with our third game. As per usual, we have to restart the stream to save the VOD, unfortunately. But it'll restart straight away. It'll be five to ten minutes. We'll be right back.